We hope you know that we appreciate your participation. There are critical issues that are faced by elected officials, um, especially school board members. For those in the audience, we encourage your participation by submitting questions. Please note that there are note cards in your area that are provided for you. You may forward them to Dr. Carlson. Dale, if you'll shake, wave your hand in case they don't know who you are. And it will be passed on to the league to um, sort through. The League of Women Voters are here this evening and we really do appreciate your participation in this. I think you've been doing this for us since I began in 1996. So um, it's great and thank you for your longevity. Um, they've committed their time each year to allow for this forum to happen. Ellen Franz is here tonight will, who will serve as our moderator and Nancy Hill um, who will serve as our timekeeper. So at this time I'd like to introduce the candidates. Lisa Collins is to my left, to my right, sorry. Um, Kari Treadway and Tim Menninger. And just a reminder to vote on April 2nd. Make sure you get out to vote and mark your calendar. Nothing is more important than education. So at this time, I will turn it over to the League of Women Voters. Ellen. Thank you. Um, we talked a little bit earlier and um, actually do numbers for the order this evening. And so uh, candidates will have use up to two minutes for an opening. And Nancy will be running her stopwatch and using the card. So keep your eye on her. Look at her. Check it out every now and then. A um, minute and a half for each question. And then up to two minutes again for closing as we approach 8 o'clock. And I have a few questions here that I can start with. And I hope people in the audience uh, do uh, participate and we get some questions there as to what you really want to know. Um, the order this evening for opening statements, uh, Tim, you were lucky enough to draw number one, so you can go ahead and give your opening statement. Thank you very much. Um, first, good evening, and uh, I'd like to thank everyone here in person for coming out on another snowy evening. Seems like it snowed a lot of Monday nights in a row now. And thank those at home for taking time to watch. I'd also like to thank the League of Women Voters for again sponsoring this forum and the School District of Holman for hosting. Why am I running for re-election? Um, as a parent of six graduates of Holman High School, I'm very aware of the importance of a quality education and really want to continue to give back and help serve the school district that my family has been the beneficiary of. Um, as we look back over these past few years, there have been many changes in polarization in Madison. Um, I have worked through this to continue to keep the focus on what is best for the Holman School District and the students that the district is entrusted with. I have been a strong supporter of the district's employee relationship relations team to ensure here at Holman the employees of the district still feel they have a voice and are important and I understand the value of the collaborative approach. As we look ahead, the school district will continue to be challenged with budget issues that come from being a growing school district, as well as the funding changes in Madison. My experience as a proud parent of six graduates of Holman High School, my experience in the business field with a degree in accounting, and my experience serving you these past six years and understanding the challenges of the districts of Holman faces feel makes me uniquely qualified to continue to help manage the changes and continue to help ensure that the taxpayers a good return on their investment and continue to ensure that the district meets its vision statement of educating every student to achieve global success. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Lisa, opening. I also want to say thanks everyone for coming. Um, it is not a great road out there right now. Um, and thank you to the people that are watching on television. And thanks to the women voters, League of Women Voters, for facilitating this event. Um, I think it is really important to be able to hear from people that are wanting to take on the challenge of being part of a school board. It's a, it, um, a huge responsibility. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about myself. My name, uh, or I'm married to Shane. Collins um, for the last nine years and he is a lieutenant here in Holman um, for the the Holman Police Department and we have two young children um, Mara is four Samara and she's just starting at Prairie View Elementary School and my son Liam is three and so um, I'm a parent that wants to be involved and um, 
with the children just starting in the district, I want to be able to have a voice in that, not only for my children, but for other children as well. I'm a social worker uh, working in human services with La Crosse County and have been there for 14 years. And I've basically worked with people from birth to um, seniors. And I feel like I really understand what the issues and needs are in our area in La Crosse County. Um, working with children and families, I've been in and out of the schools, a lot of the different schools within La Crosse County. And I value education and know how important it is for success, regardless of what a person's background is. Um, we have to support our public schools, and I love home and schools. And the people that I've talked to, um, that's why they come here and want to stay here. Sorry. Thank you. Um, like the other candidates have said, for coming out this evening and for listening and watching if you're on the TV at home. Um, and for the League of Women Voters for sponsoring us and helping us all these years. I've been honored to serve on the board for the last three years um, of this term that I'll be ending hopefully or continuing hopefully in April. And I've seen a lot of challenging things the last three years. I think this is one of the mo um, most difficult, most exciting, and also most challenging of the last terms that we've had recently. And I would love to continue to serve. I feel like the three years I've been here, I have done a very um, wonderful job and have a good insight to bring to the board. I also think that um, three years is, a, is kind of a short time to get acclimated to a board. And once we're here and we've, we've been serving on the board for a few years, I think that the continued term would, would be an, a huge asset for somebody. Um, it takes a few years just to get acclimated. And so I want to continue and um, bring more ideas and more strengths to this board. We chose Holman. Um, as, as I mentioned before when I was running, we chose Holman because of the school district. We weren't from this area, we had no idea um, what was around, and we've, it's proven to be one of the best choices we've made in our lives. So I want to continue to serve and also continue to move this school district forward. Thank you. Um, the first question goes first to uh, Lisa Collins, and the question is, what do you feel is your main role as a board member? Well, the main, the main role of the board member is basically to set policy, um, approve budgets. Uh, the board does not get into the details of how um, all of the details of the fiscal situation. We have specialists with the district that focus on um, the details of the budget, but we're we're looking at the end result of the budget and how the budgets will fall out and affect students um, in the classrooms and the district as a whole. Um, we also hire and supervise um, the superintendent with the district. And the question goes uh, next to Tim. I'm sorry, Kari, pardon me. I feel, um, along with uh, Lisa, the main role of the board is to um, be, I would say, a liaison between the district, um, between the superintendent, and also between the community and the teachers and students to make sure that all of them are working in collaboration with each other um, for the best education for our students as well as the community as a whole and what they're getting out of their education and also what they're getting out of their, dist their community um, and the district to serve, to serve them. Um, and that um, works into budget, it works into education, it works into staff morale, um, a great place to work and a great place to live. So I feel that we're that liaison and we help the superintendent with policies, expectations, and guiding um, him through that. Tim, same question. Yeah, I agree with a lot of the things that, that we've really heard is school board members, we really are elected to represent the community uh, that we serve, and that's the entire community, um, all facets, so whether they have children in school or not, I think the schools are a reflection of the community. It's also important for the school board to remember that they only have one direct report, and that is the superintendent, and it's our job to, to guide and, and counsel that. Uh, but really the role of the school board is to set that policy and budgetary priorities. And right now, uh, with the challenges that have, have been faced all school districts from the state of Wisconsin, uh, budgeting has become a much bigger role um, and very important to that 
uh, we manage those resources priority to keep the focus on students and to keep the focus on education. Um, and I feel the role is to keep the kids first as we uh, continue to manage uh, those priorities. Thank you. Uh, the next question goes um, first to Kari. And the question, it's actually a two-parter. Um, how important do you feel it is to try and retain valuable employees? What areas could the district strengthen to recruit or retain employees? Well, the first part, I think um, my, my background in human resources and um, my current role in uh, where the business that I work for, retention and recognition are the huge, huge functions of what we did. And, and I feel that it's important for every business and home and school district not being any different than other businesses in that capacity. Um, retention and recognition are one of the most important things that we can do. Our most valuable asset is our employees as a business. Um, and we need to take care of those employees. We need to build up their morale, and we also need to um, provide the opportunity for them to grow um, so that they continue to work for us. Turnover is the largest portion of um, replacing a position. And the second part was what can we do? What can um, the district uh, do to strengthen, uh, to recruit or retain employees? I think that the district does very well in this area. Um, however, I also think that there's a long way to grow in terms of the recognition and the morale. We've been focused so much on policies recently that um, we haven't forgotten about the morale and the, and the recognition, but I think that we need to put a little more focus on that coming forward in the next few years to create that bond again. Same question, Kim. Yeah. Um, I think that you know turnover has a terrific cost in any organization and that's extremely true of a school district is, is I think back and it's a long time ago now to my schooling you know I don't re remember the building so much as I remember the teachers who had an impact on my lives and I know when my kids get together and talk about school they often talk about the, the teachers and the people who had an influence on them you know as opposed to maybe a particular test or class it's, it's they remember the people more than anything and I think with that, it's very important that uh, uh, you know look to to reduce and, and minimize that turnover, and in really keep an engaged and happy workforce. I think we're very fortunate as a district that we have really terrific employee retention numbers, and I think that speaks to uh, some of the initiatives the district's done. Um, it is unfortunate that we've had a lot of retirements in past years. A lot of that is due to some of the changes at the state level that have created an increase in retirement and when you lose those years of service uh, that has a direct impact I think on the children that I said we're here here to serve. What, what are we doing and what can we do about it? Certainly with some of the changes um, in negotiation I think the district has worked to continue to give the employees a voice through the employee relationships team and reach out to them to let them know that their concerns are heard. Thank you. Lisa, same question. I think retention with staff, all school staff and teachers is probably one of the most important things because our children um, are a valuable asset that we have and we need to be able to provide them with quality educators that can understand and anticipate the students' needs, ever-changing needs, increasing needs. And you know, in talking with teachers, they seem to want to have a voice in how they do their jobs. They want to be able to collaborate with each other and support each other um, as they work through the Common Core implementation and all these increasing state standards that they have. Um, it's amazing how much they have to do and accomplish with testing and um, making sure all the um, areas are covered for each student. And so being able to talk to administration, give feedback, and feel as though they're being listened to is going to be huge. Um, I also think that being able to have input into how their working conditions are and how they see students um, being affected by class sizes and the stress of the school in general with crowding and more and more students, I think that's really affects teachers and how they feel they can be effective or not. This is a somewhat related question, perhaps, and it goes first to Tim. Um, would you support the reinstatement of full collective bargaining rights for public employees? Why or why not? I, I think absolutely. Here in Holman, 
Um, you know, the relationships that I've had with staff have been absolutely wonderful. The collaborative approach through the years to come to um, really working together, and I feel very proud of the fact that the uh, employee handbook that was developed, um, even though it was not negotiations per state standards, the collaboration with the employees relation team and the fact that it, it really patterned after a lot of the things that had been bargained over the years, I think speak to our commitment to continue to do that even with the changing times. So certainly going back to that, uh, I, I feel we've pretty much continued that and, and uh, would, would support that wholeheartedly. Lisa, same question. Being a public employee myself, um, for 14 years with Human Services, I've, I've seen the value in being a union member and being able to work together as employees to come up with solutions. And I think I view um, having really good working relationships with management and workers together kind of a side-by-side -side versus a um, top-down approach to trying to come up with solutions. And I would certainly think that employees would be valued, feel valued, um, and that reflects down on students, that you're able to have input and you're able to give critical feedback to how to make this whole educational system more effective for everyone. And so I think it's just a common respect um, to allow people to have a voice. Thank you. Lisa? Or excuse me, Kari, same question. I feel, as Tim said, that um, I don't think that we've, we've swayed too far from our the past practice with the handbook that we've created and the process that we've used to create that handbook. And so I would wholeheartedly also support that. I don't feel that we have done a lot different um, with with the ending of the bargaining rights. And so I, I feel, yes, I would, I would be completely in favor of that. And I think that um, our district has done a really good job maintaining those relationships. Again, I'm going to ask a couple of questions from the audience that are, are related. And it goes first to Lisa. And so the questions are, um, do you have priorities in a tight budget, especially if Governor Walker's budget is accepted? Um, and going along with that, do you have any ideas where money could be saved without hurting education? I believe that the priorities need to be with maintaining the quality education that we have through not increasing the class sizes. That's what I'm hearing from parents that I'm talking to as I'm talking to folks in the district. I'm hearing it from teachers. I'm hearing it from students that worry um, that there are so many kids already and if we start to add more and more students and not increase the staff to accommodate the needs, there will be a significant problem. Um, I think that providing the staff with the teachers with the resources that they need, the support, the training, um, staff development to be able to implement these core standards that are coming down the pike. It's a big change for, st for teachers and so they're going to need some help in implementing that to be successful. Uh, those are I think s the two key areas that are going to really be needing to be focused on. What was the second part of the question? Sorry. Um, do you have any ideas where money could be saved as we tighten that budget more? I think that I don't I'm from the philosophy of you, we can't look at um, doing cuts just for the sake of cuts. I think we need to really be thinking about um, what, what area um, is most important within our schools and bringing together teachers, parents, and students to kind of try to come up with some solutions. I mean, we're already short with supplies. We're short with um, staff. And so I think it's going to be difficult to say that right at this point in time. Kari, same question. Uh, as Lisa said, I think our priorities are our students and our education here in Holman. And it's difficult to manage that um, as a priority with our tight budgets. And so um, I feel that there, my initial thought for ways to save and where to cut um, budget would be compensation and um, insurance and looking at alternative ways of doing that. But, you know, as we get closer to the health care reform, I think that we're going to be struggling even more in that area. And so, um, as I would have said maybe six months ago, that would be an area to look at. I don't know that going forward in the next year, that's going to even be possible. And so, I do feel that the collaboration with the community, the staff, the district needs to come together and figure out 
how can we do this and whether that's certain extracurriculars um, and, or having some funding from the families or those participating um, I, I guess I don't know until we all come together and talk about it Jim same questions Boy, that is the big question, isn't it? And, yes, it and uh, is. <laughs> I know as, as a, a board, we have been working on this over the last several years as uh, you know, the, the, the budgets have continued to become a challenge. We've had numerous special meetings. We've looked at our entire budget processing. Um, and I think the priority needs to continue to be on student learning and on the kids, and that's where it needs to be. And I, that's why I got on the board six years ago is, is with that focus on that. And we need to be spending those resources that we have very wisely and make sure that it, it is helping our kids learn better. With that, there are, are all kinds of different ways uh, to make sure we're doing that, but what's going to have that biggest effect? Um, there are some ways I think we can look to do with that. Um, you know, in, insurance is, is constantly changing, and are we continuing to look for the best way to save money with that? Um, because, you know, there, there can be similar uh, programs, and I'm not saying cut benefits and cut, uh, uh, cut those things, but can we look for different alternatives that can save the district money, as I know some other districts in the areas are done as an area to do that. I also think looking at the cast forward budget um, is an area that as a board we need to continue to look at um, and can we look at at really evaluating to ensure that just because we did something in the past year doesn't mean we should continue to do that forward because you know as we talked about uh, you know what what helps those those best and I agree I mean class size is important uh, we don't want to sacrifice quality but trying to continue to manage that means we do need to be creative and uh, you know look at some of those different options is insurance and cast forward and I know uh, advertising as well so okay, thank you and the next question goes first to Kari and Kari I'm again I'm going to combine a couple questions because a lot of them came from the audience which is which is very good so uh, the question is what types of activities have you done to get elected to the school board and are any of those activities in the area of things that you have done to help others? Not because it was part of your job requirement, but that uh, simply how you approached um, life to help make another person's burden person's burder, burden lighter. So you can, can you combine those two questions. What, have, what has prepared you? What have you done to prepare yourself? And does it include any, what I would call, good works? Sure. I think um, in, in my family, at least, we um, put a strong emphasis on volunteering and um, charity work as, as well as just being involved member of the community. Um, while I haven't done specific things directed toward the school board election, um, I'm always involved in the community and always involved in things like Salvation Army and United Way and um, run walks and also in the classroom um, as much as I can. I'm a, I'm a full-time working mother, so it's difficult for me to do things during the day, but I will take time off of work and I will go into the classroom and I will go in to um, help an event in the evening and, and do solo ensemble volunteering and just different things like that. And so I'm with the community, I'm with the students, I'm with the teachers and the staff and listening and, and talking with them. Um, and I hope that that portrays as my family as a whole as well. We want to do as much as we can. Tim, next to you. You know, I, I think with respect to, to, to doing anything to specifically get elected, the answer to that is no, I do things because I think they're the right thing to do, um, you know, from that standpoint, and I've lived my life that way um, from, from that. Uh, you know, I volunteer at various school events. I've been very active with the, uh, the Bi-State Wrestling Program and have been a volunteer for that. Uh, even with my kids have gone, continue to do that. I've been extremely active with junior achievement um, for probably the last 15, 16 years now. I've been a past board member of junior achievement. Uh, I was upper Midwest volunteer of the year for junior achievement and continue to every year get into the classroom. And I think that speaks to my desire uh, for children. And if you understand junior achievement, it's, it's getting into the classrooms and helping bring that education around uh, you know, some of our free enterprise system. And I think that's very been important to me is, is just a general passion. 
Um, you know, the, earlier this year, I, I, I went to several meetings, uh, both for the schools and personally, in regard to the CapEx project that was going to bring power lines through our community. And although we lost that fight, I still don't think it's over yet. Um, and continue to do those type of things because of the, the need, I feel, to serve the Holman community and the Holman schools that has been um, so good to me over the years. Same question, Lisa. I think my my whole direction in my life has kind of led me into the area of service, serving the public, and that's why I chose social work and to work with families and kids that you know don't always have the best opportunities like the rest of us have had and and need some support and just need some encouragement to um, find the resources that they need. So I guess my chosen career has kind of led me towards looking at schools because. Um, in order to succeed in life, you need education. And um, my hope is to find out more about the school board. I, I volunteer with the Student Achievement and Learning Committee and wanted to learn about policies. I love, I love policy. I did my master's work in, um, in policy with um, child welfare in Madison. And, um, you know, I think that just is who I am. And I, as part of my campaign, you know, to learn more about the district not only just with my job but learning about people um, in the community I've I've gone to at least 300 doors talking to people talking to parents talking to kids um, our previous student representative Brianna Schwabenbauer set up a great program and invited all the board members to come and tour the schools in the district and listen to teachers and students and I've really learned a lot and I don't think I would be able to give much input if I didn't do that I think this next one goes first to you, Tim. Um, with Common Core standards coming to our district, what are the benefits of this initiative and what are some of the shortfalls? Well, I, I think that, boy, that's a tough question to ask, answer in 90 seconds. Um, I think the, uh, the, the benefits to it um, are that it's going to continue to challenge uh, new ways and of looking at things. It's going to continue to challenge uh, potentially some of those uh, who've continued to do things out of habit and and will will help us continue to look to what's going to grow student learning and grow education um, obviously some of the challenges to that is that hopefully anytime there's something new it does not create uh, a disruption in that student learning as these things grow and I have confidence that the educators here in Holman will navigate that properly I know those negotiations are already underway but anytime you have a change um, is there going to be that disruption? And also uh, the concern is, is you know, and I'm an advocate of, of, of certainly having metrics, but also understanding that when you test things, it's only one piece of the puzzle. And, you know, I think some people it's an all or nothing, and I always say it, it's, it's somewhere in the middle. It needs to be part of the discussion. It does not need to be all of the discussion. And I think there's a concern that could it um, change uh, some people into maybe too dramatic of a shift along that line, and that could also be a challenge. Lisa, same question. I've learned about the Common Core just through the Student Achievement and Learning Committee a little bit, but I think going to the schools and talking to the teachers and seeing it um, roll out in the classrooms, I think that the teachers are challenged with time restrictions. Um, it's a huge amount of administrative training to figure out how to implement this. This is a whole new way of thinking. And um, they need t resources, they need guidance on you know how to implement this new ideas um, I think it's gonna take some time to get it together um, I like I like some of the philosophies of Common Core because it really does look at where the child is at and if you're not if you're not learning something let's go back and revisit that again and help you master it maybe a different way and I think that's really neat you can be creative with that um, I think the tests though I hear from everyone it's all about testing and these outcomes and so pushing kids to get a result, uh, just the number to show success, um, versus are we really digesting it, living and breathing, understanding you know, what we're learning. That's going to be, I think, the challenge. 
I think the, the Common Core standards are a, a good thing for the state and a good thing for um, districts that probably aren't as successful as Holman is in terms of making sure that their students are meeting a certain level and, and being where they need to be to grow in life and to get to the next place that they want to be no matter where that is, whether it's um, you know labor, whether that's second, you know, higher education, wherever they'd like to go in life. And so I think it's a good thing in theory. I, I feel that um, you asked what a negative would be, and, and I don't know if it's a negative per se as a change, and just as much as in my work when we change a process or change how we do something, it's difficult to adjust and it's difficult to um, get that as, as our second nature, and so I hope that we don't lose some creativity of our teachers because they're trying so hard to focus on what they need to do and, and losing that freedom to um, feel that they can do it in a different way and so I hope that we can come back to that once they're more comfortable with the actual standards are Lisa this comes first to you what is the purpose of standardized testing are there other measurements we should be using to assess um, our student success I think standardized testing can you know serve the purpose of trying to look at you know how can we evaluate all students um, and look at the district itself and how are we doing with providing instruction. I think the problem is you're going to have a lot of students that are going to fall into the cracks and you know I think that's going to be a real problem and so I, I'm, I'm hoping that with some of the common core standards looking at going back and reviewing things, going back at trying to meet those individualized needs um, you know, kids are going to be able to grasp concepts, learn concepts in different ways that are, will help them show that they really master something. You know, the standardized, te standardized testing can be, um, I think, problematic sometimes, though, because you're going to have kids that aren't going to be able to reflect what they know um, based on a standard um, way of evaluating. Um, Kari, same question. I'm in favor of standardized testing in general. I think that we we need a base so that our staff know where to where it's expected to get our students to be and what level they need to be at. I, I don't feel that it's a negative thing. I feel that it's positive. We just need to figure out a way to assist them through that to make it easy and smooth for them um, to accomplish that. I. I also feel, you know, with increased um, expectations, I feel there's been a lot of research done on increased student learning, and so um, just because we expect more, um, they they'll get there, um, they will achieve. Um, if we expect less, they'll give us less. So, and question, Tim. Again, I think standardized tests are a piece of it. Uh, you know, they're certainly not the whole thing. And as I just recently had my annual performance evaluation at work and was made well aware of some targets and metrics that I need to achieve there that are measured on a, on a nearly everyday basis. But I think there's a lot more that goes into it as well. I mean, obviously looking at the increase in time, uh, continuing to work with uh, those students with needs, and, and can we increase that um, you know, and show some progress towards that I think is important as well. There are also some other things that are important to look at. Uh, I have been a huge proponent of saying co-curricular is really a misnomer. It's part of the curriculum. Things such as involvement in sports and DECA, and is there a way to, to measure that as part of the school, I think is important as well, because you know that is part of learning teamwork. That is part of, um, I think, you know helping our kids learn all of those skills that are important, as well as I believe that if we can, you know, uh, idle hands, and the more time they're involved, I think the better citizens of the community they're going to be as well and so measuring all of those things is our important and I don't think you dismiss any one of those a test is a snapshot in time and that's what it is and it's like any picture it can be a good picture um, sometimes I don't take very good pictures they're just snapshots and but using that to, to learn um, as a piece but I think there's a lot of other measures that are part of that as well Ari the next question comes to you and, and again we're still talking about standardized tests and it's the question really is how do you measure um, success, evidence of learning or success um, of the district? Uh, is it by looking at those scores, test scores in the paper and comparing yourself to other communities? Is it um, looking at individual improvement of students or how would, you, how would you measure success and is that standardized test the best measurement we have? 
right now. Um, I, no, I don't. I don't feel that one test um, is is the answer. I don't. I don't feel that if you were to look back at my grades in, in high school and middle school and even college that those tests are truly an accurate reflection of who I am and how well I did. Um, I could say that in high school I, I was a great student, but was I a 4.0? No. And um, in college, I, I went down. And then in my master's program, I was a 4.0. So I think it just depends on where you are in your life, how mature you are, and how dedicated you are, and, and also the influence that a teacher or a, a person may have at that point in your life. And so I don't think a test is, is the be-all, end-all. I think we need to combine a lot of different factors um, into that. And, um, having our statistics and having our goals as a district in many different areas of student learning um, reflects how well we as a district would do. I don't think everything needs to be a test score, um, but we need, certainly need to have that as part of it as an expectation. Same question, Tim? You know, the, the how do you measure success? And I, I think back to when my kids used to run cross country, and I, I watched some kids who finished very, very high in the cross country races who maybe were not running their best. And then I'd watch some kid finish way back in the pack and collapse crossing the finish line literally almost in tears. And who was more successful? Well, oftentimes the one at the back of the pack because they gave it everything they had. But yet they were still out there running, setting a personal best. And I think you have to be careful with test scores because although they're a measure and although that person who collapses and gave it everything, probably had more success than maybe somebody who may be more gifted who, who didn't use their potential. You have to find a way to measure that potential. And yeah, the track meets and cross country meets are still timed and they're still scored. Um, it's a piece of it, but I think it's what you do with those pieces. And there's a lot of other measures of success. It's that growth over time that you see. To use the cross country analogy again, somebody who improved their personal best by minutes over the course of the season. Is, is very successful over maybe somebody who, who didn't and again didn't use their potential. Things such as graduation rates for the school district, things as participation in National Honor Society are all I think important measures of success because it's in the end what is success is what makes us feel good and you know there's a lot of good things to feel about and um, you know standardized tests uh, I feel very proud our ACT scores are going up and three of the four elementaries had an exceeds on the scorecard so well, you know, there's a lot of good things to feel about, but a lot more than just a number. Same question, Lisa? I think how do we measure success? Maybe the question is better, what are we measuring um, to look at success? And I've talked to a lot of parents in the district that are, look, that are saying, whatever happened to relationships and communication skills and being able to negotiate, um, whatever happened to being able to have some real life applicable um, skills. When you go out and you leave school, are you gonna be able to apply that geometry? Are you gonna be able to apply the algebra, stu algebra things? Or are you gonna be able to um, use real life skills to navigate, uh, to be independent, to be successful, to be a contributor in the community? Um, so I think maybe just reevaluating what we're assessing a little bit and maybe also um, looking at what the baseline is, I kind of agree, you know, where did you start from? And one person's place where they're kind of a customary excelling and it, things are easy for them um, isn't, you know, they're not making as much progress as the person that maybe started here and they've been working so hard and diligently and maybe they only got a C plus, but boy, that's a big deal for that student. Thank you. And the next question goes first, Tim. Um, do you believe it is important to include all stakeholders in the school district decisions and goal setting? I could give you a real short answer to that and say absolutely. Um, but to expand on that a little bit longer, as, as uh, you know, people who've watched a board meeting know sometimes I like to expand a little bit. Um, I, I think that there's you know, a much better approach when you get more opinions to it. Uh, there are often con all kinds of sides and uh, you know disagreement is is healthy because it allows all viewpoints to be expressed and to shared so the more involvement the more different ideas the more diversity of opinions that you have and I think that's important and healthy for any organization to to look at that and so certainly as as stakeholders 
um, to have that involvement. I think the board has done a very good job of that, as I mentioned previously with the employee relations team, but just the number of things that the board has done. We, um, you know, over the last term really came through our vision and values and had a cross-section of all community members over that as well. Um, and those things are to remember that schools are a community school, and the more input we get, the better ideas we have, the more diversity we have, and the stronger we are. Um, and then ultimately, the more buy-in to the solution that comes as well. Thank you. Lisa? I know that Holman has a long-term strategic plan, and one of the uh, bulleted areas is parent and community involvement. And um, I firmly believe in that. That's um, kind of a philosophy that I live by, is that unless you involve the people that are most affected by what you're trying to work on, it's not going to succeed. You're not going to have buy-in from the community. Um, and I think a school district or board of any kind needs to have transparency, it needs to be able to be open to answering questions of any kind. And we need to seek it out. You have to, can't just say, show up to the meetings. If you, if you don't know, that's your problem. I mean, I, I don't believe that. I think, you know, maybe um, reaching out to people and parents are saying, gosh, I just got home from work and I, I don't have time. I'm making supper for the kids. I don't have time to be involved in the PTO, but I want to. Um, so I think we really need to make a diligent effort. It sounds like we've done a lot. I mean, just with the committees that, have, that are in place right now and having community involvement, um, parent and teacher involvement, and that's a great place to start. Kari, same question. Um, as others, yes. I, I feel that all stakeholders should be involved, and I think that they all want to be involved. And, and until they're invited to have those conversations, um, they probably won't come up and give ideas or give input. Um, they might, even not, might not even know that it, something's going on. And so I think our district owes it to the, the community to have some communication, increased awareness, and education out to our um, parents and, and the rest of the community as well, and students too. I think they're important stakeholders in, in their own lives. Our example, perfect example is we all do different things in, in, our, in our world and in our work and in those that don't work, and we all have different expertise. You know, finance is not my expertise. I, I, I don't enjoy numbers, and so um, I bring other things to the table, and just as much as I bring something to the current board, um, I think others bring something to the other conversation that we would invite them to be involved in. So we need to remember that everybody has a voice and everybody has a different angle that we may not know about. So. Um, Lisa, this question comes to you first. What is the strongest asset you bring to the group of seven members with varied viewpoints? I think the strongest um, strength that I bring to the table is a drive to learn more and kind of investigate things and look at all the options. Um, I understand that there are time restrictions. I understand that there are um, limitations to that, but I think really making sure that the voices are heard. And um, I mean, I agree with Kari that you may be ta sitting across the table from someone that you seem like you come from different walks of life, but I'm going to tell you that there's probably more like likelihood that you have something in common that you can work on. Um, I'm always looking for a common connection that I have with anybody that I work with, and that's the place to start with. Um, common vision, common goals. Thank you. Kari, same question. I think one of my strongest um, assets would be in my counseling background, I was, I was taught and I learned to listen. And so while I may not be the most outspoken person in a board meeting, and I may not be the one that talks and, and gives a lot of um, comments, I'm one that's sitting back and generally is listening so that when we are in closed session or when we are in an important meeting or have a decision to make, I can bring another angle, I can ask another question. Um, some people would say I'm kind of a devil's advocate. Um, I don't think that's a bad thing. Um, I'm not necessarily saying something to bring up a, a negative question as much as to bring another thought process into someone else's mind. And so I think that just being able to listen and be introverted and introspective on what we're trying to think about and decide um, would be my, beta, my best asset. Jim, same question. Um, you know, as I, as I think about it, it probably has to be my analytical skills. Um, 
um, you know, I with with some of the background I have in the accounting and uh, you know having a lot of kids, you learn to analyze things very quickly, um, and you know to sit and look at the things that that are happening and come before us um, is important to analyze it and to not. Uh, react over quickly either direction but to truly get to understand it understand what's behind it um, I think is very important and you know and and I think you know as we've seen too much polarization in Madison I think we've been isolated from that and that's a great thing here in Holman um, you know and I think that's because of our ability to analyze and respect each other and I think that's important and thank you this uh, next question goes first to Kari um, and it asks you to identify the most urgent need of the school district and how your experience on the school board or elsewhere has prepared you to handle it. This is a tough one because I feel that there's a few, a few that are, are vying for that most urgent need role and um, I guess I would have to say um, budget. Um, and I think that I say that because I sit on the Building and Grounds Committee there's a lot of unmet needs that we have that the community and the district probably aren't even aware of as of yet because we're just still working through all those and and so I see that and those coming up um, that we'll be presenting as well as and as much as I see decreased funding and all those other kinds of things that we need to um, spend time on and money on and so I think the budget is the, the most urgent need and I feel that in my current role where I work um, We've had to deal with this in budget cuts just like other businesses have had to recently and so trying to find a way to be creative in that has has prepared me well for this. Thank you. Um, Tim, same question. You know that is and as I think about it it's it's it really is a difficult question because there are a lot of urgent needs. I also serve on the Buildings and Grounds Committee and, and uh, in my first year on that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's concerning some of the deferred maintenance that has occurred because of some of these budget cuts. However, um, you know, in keeping my kids first, I think the higher need um, is, and again, this isn't diminish the others. I want to be very careful to say, well, those aren't important because they are. Uh, but to me, as we look out ahead, I think one of the biggest challenges facing our district is keeping up with the technology needs. Uh, we're going to continue to see, uh, you know, less textbooks in the old-fashioned paper form and more learning through um, iPads and those type of things as, as textbooks become to that. Uh, we've started to um, you know, put in place some infrastructure uh, to go wireless in the buildings, but we need to continue to expand that to ensure uh, that our children have not only the technology to compete in today's world, but the technology to continue to learn um, at the pace they're going to need to going forward. And I think that is a huge um, urgent need facing the district right now. Lisa, same question. I think the needs are all connected to budgets and increasing in demands for state um, improvements in core, common core standards, um, looking at the increase in special needs students and students with unique and diverse issues. Um, but I think the biggest need when you look at everything is that we have to figure out a way to accomplish this together and really as a district, as a community, um, collaborate more and be able to talk through difficulties and strategize because I think we've got a lot of resources here that maybe aren't tapped into yet. Um, I think that although we're low on funding, although uh, you know we're continuing to grow, there are some amazing teachers, administrators, community members, businesses that are willing to be part of this, but are we engaging them fully in the process to use the resources that we have. Thank you. I'm sorry, I'm just reacting to the sound. I didn't know if it meant something <laughs> or not. Um, I think uh, we'll do uh, perhaps one last question, unless I can squeeze two in here as we're getting closer to eight. Um, in the question, I guess this goes first to Tim. Would you consider it beneficial to return to a traditional eight period day at the high school level? Or do you feel block scheduling is the right path to continue on towards the future? 
Well, anyone who is, has been a, a frequent watcher or attendee at, at some of the meetings know that I've, I've questioned that. I don't know the right answer, but I think it does need to be looked at. Um, I have some concerns around the block scheduling uh, anecdotally from students and parents that I've heard. Um, some concerns anecdotally that they may take a class in the spring of one year um, and then because of block scheduling not have that again until the fall of the following year or vice versa. Um, and that's a long time in between subject matters. I mean with the student learning um, that can have a, a potential negative impact. I would want to see more data. I would want to see more studies. I would certainly want to involve the opinions of the teachers. Um, but you know, the other concern with the block scheduling is the length of the class period. To, you know, to, to hold a, a, a young person's attention for that length of time can also be a challenge. And I think it's important um, as a district that we look at it um, because there are some challenges. You know, when I look at some of the, the uh, school report cards on the high school, uh, we are lagging some of the other schools in the MVC and is this an opportunity to help our, our students um, improve their education? So um, I, I, my, my intuition is I'm not a big fan of block scheduling, but I would certainly want to be open um, to the discussion and I think it's one that needs to be had. Thank you. Lisa, same question. Um, Thinking about the block scheduling and the eight periods a day, um, one thing I have heard in several of the schools that I've talked with staff and teachers and kids is that it's so hard to be shifted quickly from one topic to the next through the, through the hallways, mad rush to shift their mind frame into the next subject. Um, I think this rapid processing is tough for kids with the transitions. Um, however, you know, I think, I agree, teacher input, student input is going to be huge in figuring out what's going to work best for them to be able to engage, stay engaged, and retain um, the information. So I'd want to hear more from them. Thank you. Kari, same question. I'd like to see a lot of research from other districts and other states and other towns that um, have done both and, and what their success rates are in both of those. I, I feel that the block scheduling is difficult um, for students. As Tim mentioned, I think it's difficult to learn something in one year and have a half a year off or even have a few terms off. Um, such as math and reading and those kinds of things. I think repetition, repetition, repetition is the way that um, some students learn. Other students learn by um, engrossing themselves in that subject matter for a short period of, you know, for a longer period of time, and, and then they sustain that. Um, there are many different learning styles of students, and I think that we need to figure out overall the average and what's the best thing to do. So I, I'm not a proponent for or against. I, I just think we need to do some education and some research on what's best. Okay. I think we'll uh, go ahead and move to closing statements since it's about five minutes too at this point and uh, Lisa you're first well again I want to thank um, everyone that's come to listen to all of us and give our insights into the different topics and League Women Voters and um, also uh, the board members that are participating here I, you know I've, I've learned a lot just kind of listening to you and seeing you as I've been coming to the board meetings and participating with the Student Achievement and Learning Committee. Um, my hope is that I can bring my strengths and talents um, as a social worker, as a parent, um, as an active community member. Um, I, I give my heart and soul to what I do, what I get involved with. And um, I'm thinking about our future I'm thinking about education as the top priority for our community. Um, people want to be here. People want to live here. People move here um, because Holman has great schools. And I want to be able to maintain that integrity, um, the, the excellence that we have. Uh, you can walk down a hallway um, and, and you can feel it and you can see it, uh, that students really um, like being at school. Um, I like watching the classrooms. Um, they're very engaged, and so I'm really happy that my kids are here, and hopefully we can support every person, every family, um, every youth that goes through 
the home and school district in the way they need to be supported. Thank you. Kari, your closing. Thanks to everyone as well, um, like Lisa said, and I think that I've, I've enjoyed my time on the board. It's, it's a huge time commitment, and if I um, didn't feel so strongly about education and, and feel so strongly that I could serve this district and, and I enjoy doing that, that I wouldn't want to do it again. And so I, I think that speaks highly of why I'm here and why I'd like to run again, and I hope that I have your support to do that. Um, I think there's a long way that we need to go, but we have been through a lot of the challenging, challenging times in the last three years, and I think as a district, we've gotten through it very, very well and successfully, and I, I wanna continue to, to bring that um, to our district. I don't, I don't want to go backwards. I feel that we now have some time to focus on things we haven't really focused on yet, and, and I think that's staff, that's morale, that's expectations, and um, I, I just, my relationship piece and bringing people together would serve the district well so that we can we can blend our community blend our district and blend our staff and students to continue to be successful thank you and Tim your closing um, you know again would like to thank the League of Women Voters for your sponsorship this evening and your time coming out on the snowy evening and, and again the home and school district for hosting uh, you know I've been very proud to serve the home and school district these past six years uh, you know, I'm, I'm proud of the school district that's received the Sunshine Award for the openness where we see more closed, closed uh, at the state level. Uh, I've been proud of the work that we've done uh, working together with staff and the community through these recent challenges to help make home and school district better. Uh, you know, I've been proud of the continued growth we've seen in all areas, uh, not just in student numbers, but in academics and participation and, and just all around the, 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 the feelings around the home and school district. As someone with a, certainly a passion for kids, I've worked hard to keep students at the center of the decisions that we've made. Uh, highlight for anybody who's seen a board meeting is when the students come to present or even attend meetings. I always get excited. There's just a little more uh, excitement for me and uh, certainly I, I see a student at home in high school in the audience tonight and uh, it's just good to see as well. So uh, thank you for coming. That really helps me keep focused on what's important and that's keeping our kids first and uh, hope to continue to serve the needs of the home and school district and to uh, you know, help uh, you know, make sure we're uh, uh, providing that great quality education uh, to the students we're entrusted to serve. Thank you. Thank you, and, and before I sign off, I wanna thank the audience here tonight because there were some very good questions, a few I didn't get to, um, but uh, the moderator also, always appreciates lots of questions, so thank you for your participation tonight. Well, on behalf of the School District of Holman, I'd like to thank you, Ellen, and you, Nancy, for the, again, coming out and helping to moderate and facilitate this um, uh, forum this evening, the League of Women Voters, uh, who you are representing. Also, thank you to the school board candidates for running and being interested in our schools. It's what makes the Holman School District the great school district that it is, that there are a lot of people that are involved and interested and wanting to um, put their names forward or serve on committees and so I do want to thank you and the final thing is to remember to vote on April 2nd so thank you very much <laughs>